A great morning, everyone. It is my pleasure to present my study titled Abundance and Distribution of the Philippine Brown Deer, Rugusa Mariana, in the Obumanuvu Ancestral Domain, Davao City. This project is in collaboration with the Ateneo de Davao University, Davao Oriental State University, USAID Protect Wildlife, Philippine Eagle Foundation, and the Commission on Higher Education. To give you an eagle's eye view of my presentation, here is the topic outline. The Philippine brown deer, scientifically known as Rusa Mariana, is endemic in the Philippines. It has been listed as vulnerable under IUCN Red List and endangered per the Philippine Red List of Threatened Species. It is known to be a biological indicator as its population dictates the effectiveness of conservation status and dictates the type and structure of forest vegetation. Further, it is considered as a cultural keystone species by the Ubumanuvo indigenous community in Davao City, Philippines. In this study, we were persevered to attain the following objectives. First, determine the relative abundance index of the Philippine brown deer, Rusa Mariana, within the Ubu Manuvu ancestral domain. Second, map the distribution of the Philippine brown deer in terms of forest cover, elevation, slope ranges, and proximity to water bodies. And third, document the indigenous knowledge of the Ubu Manuvu community on the Philippine brown deer. We explored a total of four villages in Carmen, Salaysay, Tambobong, and Tawan-Tawan in Davao City, Philippines, all of which are the traditional domains of Ubumanuvus. Here is a, a fly on the wall of the methodology that our team employed to attain the pre previously mentioned objectives. To give you the details, we started by asking permission from the Ubu Manuvo indigenous community by presenting the study proposal before their tribal leaders and elders. As part of the entry protocol, we were asked to conduct a traditional ritual preceding the conduct of key informant interviews or KIIs. We interviewed a total of 12 forest guards, tribal leaders and elders on their knowledge about the deer. Technically, their long-term association with the natural landscape provides significant insights on the deer's abundance, distribution, and conservation status. Afterwards, our team installed 10 camera traps in the study sites for 500 days to survey the deer's abundance. At a minimum distance interval of 250 meters, the camera traps were distributed in a 2.5 kilometer transect line within the forest interior. We also recorded the GPS locations of the camera traps and the preliminary evidence of deer presence, such as the fecal pellets, hoof prints, and browsing areas. The study results were presented back to the community for validation. Now, here are the major findings of the study. Shown in the photos are the deer individuals which we are able to document in the surveyed sites. We recorded a female deer in Salaysay, figure A, a male deer in Tawan Tawan, figure B, and another female de deer in Carmen, figure C. Sadly, we also recovered a deceased individual strangled to death by a nylon trap mounted in Barangay Carmen. This table shows the deer's relative abundance index, or RAI, within the Ubumanuvo ancestral domain. Based on the four independent groups detected over 500 camera trap days, we computed the RAI value of 0 0.8, implying a relatively low population status. The next four maps illustrate the exact locations where the camera traps were installed and the deer were detected in Barangay Carmen, Salaysay, Tambobong, and Tawan-Tawan. 
As I previously mentioned, we also recorded the GPS locations of the physical evidence of deer presence to strategically identify the locations of the camera traps and also provide data on the deer's distribution. This figure reveals the fecal pellets, browsing areas, hoof prints, and sleeping den of the deer. We were also able to detect the deer within the primary and secondary forests, particularly with closed and open forest covers. Their distribution was documented at an elevation ranging from 1,518 meters above sea level to 1,709 meters above sea level. Deer individuals were recorded in a slope range from 50% to 50% above. This result conforms with local narratives that the deer usually thrives in sloppy and hilly areas. Additionally, the distribution of the deer was also attributed to the presence of rivers and creeks. Based on the figure shown, the deer were detected proximal to the water bodies in Salaysay, Tawan Tawan, and Carmen. This figure shows the different conservation threats that we personally documented on the surveyed sites. It includes deforestation, hunting, and human disturbance as evidenced by the presence of abandoned camps in the forest interior. Aside from the deer, we were also able to record other species such as the common palm civet, the Philippine warty pig, monkey, shrew, squirrel, and other unidentified species. Using a qualitative design, we found that the deer is locally known as sarong, with the males called as gahapanga and females as kwaping. The locals describe the deer to have brown to dark brown pelage, fawns have white spots, and males are generally bigger and have antlers. In terms of diet and behavior, the locals perceive that the deer is herbivorous, nocturnal, and makes louding, loud barking calls and are shy and elusive to humans. The Ubumanuvu community perceives the deer population is decreasing, but their persistent efforts with several non-government organizations have contributed to the gradual recovery of the deer population. They added that hunting and habitat loss are two of the most prevalent threats against the deer. Meanwhile, they also declared the deer as a Pusaka species, sanctifying its importance to the life and history of the tribe. Consequently, this philosophy ideates the deer as a focal conservation species. They have established conservation policies to deter criminal offenses against wildlife, such as the Philippine brown deer. Interestingly, the Ubu Manuvus use the deer as food, traditional medicine, bioindicator, as a symbol of cultural identity, and even as an omen. In conclusion, we found that the deer has a very low relative abundance index in the surveyed sites within the Ubu Manuvu ancestral domain. They are broadly distributed across fragmented primary and secondary forests at an elevation of 1,518 to 1,709 meters above sea level. Hunting and habitat loss remain as the leading anthropogenic threats despite local conservation efforts. Therefore, there is a need to strengthen conservation initiatives through the stringent implementation of wildlife monitoring and enforcement of culture-based conservation policies. Further, we recommend a total ban of the deer for at least 10 years to ensure that its population recovers. We also need to strengthen wildlife monitoring by considering the deer as a priority species and integrating patrolling methods with community education programs. We can also employ other techniques to monitor the deer population through tagging and radio telemetry, radio telemetry methods. Thank you for listening and have a great day ahead. 
This is Janelle P. Villegas from Davao Oriental State University.